Hello and welcome to another episode of Frightfully Forgotten's Horror Movies Halloween Special. But before we get started, what are we drinking? Today we are simply drinking a Citrus Smash IPA. Today we're going to bring to you a Halloween 3 watch along. We're going to pick five iconic scenes, scenes that we think are very necessary to the story of Halloween 3. Watch the scenes and we're gonna kind of talk through it, explain why they work, why yeah. they're great, why they add to Halloween 3 being one of the best Halloween and horror movies ever. This is our third episode we've done on Halloween 3 because <laughs> we just love it all that much, right? And yeah. it's, it is, we are filming this on October 1st. <laughs> And what better way to start off the October season yeah. by watching a bit of Halloween 3. So the first scene is the opening scene. First of all, the music is still done by John Carpenter, even though John Carpenter didn't direct the movie. Yeah, but he had everything else to do with it, right? Yeah. Right away you get that piercing, yeah. that piercing music, those sounds. And uh, the great thing about these opening credits is it does build a lot of int intrigue yeah. and suspense. Final reveal at the end of what exactly you're seeing. All these lines that you don't really... Yeah, you don't know what the hell they are. Don't know what they are until it pans out at the end and you see the full pumpkin. Yeah, and then it starts flickering yeah. on and off. As a kid, I never got that. Right. I was like, hmm, whatever. But, you know, when you watch the movie, yeah, it ties in with the fucking whole movie. It ties in with the original two movies opening up with a pumpkin. Yeah. But it also ties in with the technology end of Halloween 3 and how that ties into Halloween, the myth of Halloween and Samhain. Yeah, yeah. Or, as Loomis says, Samhain! So moving past the opening credits, now we have the first scene of the movie. Yeah. The music is just so damn yeah. good. It gets your heart moving, eh? Yeah. That's like, oh. And, and the neat thing about the music, too, like we said before, it is done, done by John Carpenter. It is like Halloween 1, where it is a different time signature. So as different as this is from the original two Halloweens, because there's no Myers, it's still very much like Halloween. Right, right away, you're, you're intrigued. What is this guy running from? Yeah. And he's got a mask in his pocket. Yeah, like the movie starts off with the perfect sense of mystery. But to look at it, it looks like a Halloween movie. Mm -hmm. It looks like it takes place in the same universe as 1 and 2. It's just got that, you know, I, who's the DOP on this? Director of photography. Is it Dean Cundy? I think it's Cundy. Well, if it is Dean Cundy, that explains why. Yeah. There never was supposed to be a Halloween 2. No. This was supposed to be the second Halloween movie. So this scene too, I love because like, <laughs> <laughs> it's nighttime, but it's still shot really well. Well, that's another thing about a great looking movie with really good uh, director of photography is they can pull that off. And it's hard to yeah. pull off is the, the nighttime shots, which you can see what's happening, but it doesn't look artificial. Mm -hmm. That's hard to do. And that's a yeah. hallmark yeah. of Halloween, the first one, right? And that's a hallmark of this movie, too. Yeah. Newscast on... Stonehenge. It seems throwaway, right? But it's completely not throwaway. It ties in perfectly. Yeah. Yeah, so you really have to pay attention to this movie as well. There's a lot of clues. And the first time you hear that, that damn <laughs> jingle, which is London Bridge is falling down. Yeah. Because the story is they need to write a jingle for this uh, commercial that always plays. And they didn't really have time to come up with something new. And they're like, well, what what's free that we can use? We won't get sued for for copyright. And they're just like, oh, London, London Bridge. Bridge is falling down. Yep. And then Tommy Lee Wallace did the, the narration on the commercial. Gather round. If you're like us, as soon as October 1st hits, that song is stuck in my head throughout the whole damn month. <laughs> We're going to fast forward a little bit to where the man in the beginning, when he was running away from whoever, you really don't know. The guys from Kraft work. <laughs> he ends up running to a guy up in the gas station and he takes him to the hospital. And we kind of feel that 
it's all kind of part of one scene, really. It's all part of the opening of this movie. Yeah. So technically there are two scenes, but we're going to count it as one scene. Mm -hmm. The mysterious old man's in the hospital, and one of these guys in the suits come into the hospital and puts on some nice leather gloves. <laughs> yeah. So this is the first uh, real kill of the movie because the first kill we saw with the guy being crushed in the cars is actually not a kill because that's not a man. <laughs> yeah. And this is a great kill. Like, this is one of the best kills in a Halloween movie. Yeah. And there's no Myers. Yeah. And it's original, too. These guys are the new Myers. You think he's going to punch him? Yeah. <laughs> ah, and it's cringy. <laughs> oh, super rubber mask. Yeah. But it just pulls a poor bugger's face all <laughs> apart. How he looks. <laughs> Poor guy. <laughs> yeah. I remember this part as a kid, watching this movie for the first time as a kid. Again, not really knowing that Myers wasn't in this, but th th this part coming up always really creeped me out. Yeah. Especially when you don't know yet. You don't know anything. Who these people are, these guys in the suits, you don't know who they are yet. And like what this guy does now coming next is completely out of the blue. Yep. I love how it's shot, too. So the guy doused himself in gas and just... You know, seeing that for the first time, it's like, what? What? Like, it's, again, it's it's all a mystery. We now fast forward to a scene here where we get introduced to a shop owner named Marge Gutman. She runs into Ellie, and Ellie is the daughter of the old man who was killed in the hospital. And Ellie ends up running into the doctor, who is Dan Chalice, played by uh, Tom, Tom Atkins. Atkins. They've gone to the town of Santa Mura, mm -hmm. which is the same town from Invasion of the Body Snatchers, the That's original right. movie. And they've gone there because this is where they manufacture these masks that Ellie's dad was holding when he was killed. Yeah. So it's all about the mask. Closer, hopefully, to the mystery. <laughs> of his dad closer to something else too uh <laughs> tom adkins wang <laughs> yeah getting <laughs> marge is getting comfortable in bed so we're gonna play this scene for a couple of reasons number one we find it super funny mm -hmm. because tom adkins <laughs> always in these movies gets with like the young good-looking women yeah and he's all old <laughs> and could be her grandfather <laughs> Like in The Fog, he gets with Jamie Lee Curtis. <laughs> yeah. Of course, Dan Chalice, he's got a bottle. She's got some nighty on, you know, already. <laughs> yeah. So he's left, he's abandoning it. He's abandoned his kids on yeah. Halloween. Yeah. To hang out with her and solve this mystery that he really has nothing to do with. And he's solving the mystery, all he's right. He's solving a mystery. <laughs> <laughs> How old men get laid. <laughs> mystery. It's too damn easy. That's what it is for him. <laughs> the deed is done. <laughs> so, yeah, he grabbed a six-pack of beer, abandoned his kids and his ex-wife. Yeah. <laughs> All to hunt down some red herring here. <laughs> yeah. So, the ironic thing about this is Marge Gutman is actually played by Tom Atkins' real-life wife. <laughs> and it's like a, quite a funny scene when you know that, that mm -hmm. she's in the next room while he's screwing so some... <laughs> She's all sucking on her tit. <laughs> and that's why you don't fuck around with mysterious electronics. <laughs> yeah. Who cares? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> She's all getting fucking fried. That effect, too, like... Oh, it's fucking awesome. Oh, and the bugs come out. Real bugs, not CGI fucking bugs. Great scene. Yeah, yeah. Great scene, Jerry! And again, it builds more mystery. It's like, okay, well, they're getting closer, but they're all... But 
what are they getting into? Mm-hmm. These laser beams? Yeah, and shit? yeah, it's crazy. And so, Tom <laughs> Tom Atkins' ass right there. Yeah, for all the ladies out there. We're going to jump forward a little bit and just show a glimpse of one scene. Very short because it's really good. Dan Chalice and Ellie are going to take a tour of the mask factory where these masks are made that her father was found with. And the mask that just killed Marge Gutman. That yeah. They don't know what happened to her. They just saw her being hauled out of her hotel room at night. Yeah, and you hear Cochran misfire. They get a tour of the whole factory. And when they're leaving the factory, they walk past all these like garage doors and they see her dad's car parked there. Yeah. Which is a super creepy scene. And it's the music too. Yeah. And you see all those weird guys in suits just standing around like strategically. I like how he doesn't follow her. Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, and those mysterious guys stop her. Yeah. And the fucking music is so good. <laughs> it's so good. Trade secrets. Trade secrets. Ah. But then he, he's smiling, but right there he looks yeah. evil. Yeah, yeah. Mm. He's so good. <laughs> yeah. So that's, we're not counting that as one of the scenes. <laughs> that's just a little blip on the radar of this movie that's really, really good. Another great, you know, little yeah. little piece of business there. Yeah. <laughs> He's all drinking. <laughs> He's always drinking. <laughs> At this point, Ellie has been actually kidnapped. And we don't know where she is, but Dan Chalice assumes she's been taken back to the factory. He goes yeah. to the factory. Gets him to fight with those robots. Yeah, punches one in the stomach and pulls out all that orange Julius shit. Yeah, and like <laughs> wires and oh yeah. god. Yeah. <laughs> I love his reaction to that. It's so good. He's taken hostage by Conlo Cochran and he's forced to watch this experiment with these masks and the television commercial that will be playing on Halloween night that he's asked all the kids to gather around the yeah. TV to watch. He won't take his order for the next year for masks yeah. because he knows he's going to be <laughs> dead. <laughs> and the look on his face, just mm -hmm. he's so proud of himself. He plays such a good bad guy. He also plays another good bad guy in Robocop. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and I like how there's, you know, there's a little bit of joking at first. Yeah. But as the viewer, you you know, you know that this isn't a joke. They don't play it like a comedy. Oh, that scene always... Oh, the, even, the, yeah, the even, snake. The snake, even now it kind of gets to me a bit. Ugh. When you watch it, like, on a higher definition version... You see the sculpture of the kid's face yeah. better. <clears throat> That's true, yeah. And see, because you don't really see the kid's face so much on the VHS no. version, but on this, you see the lips. Not only do you see the kid die, but you see the family die. Yeah. Right? And so you know what's in store. And the thing that's going to happen to almost every household in, like, North America. <laughs> yeah. See, I love how these scenes are followed by more serious tone. Yeah. There's nothing that takes you out of that. You're left to absorb it. And then it pans up to the Stonehenge stones, which harks back to the beginning, the right? Beginning. On the TV, yeah. About the stones being stolen from Stonehenge, yeah. Know? The blue stones. Yeah. It has a power. And I love this scene, too, because it really makes... It puts you in the spirit of Halloween, like... Halloween 3 nails the Halloween spirit, I think, better than most movies. Mm -hmm. And I love how this scene follows the previous scene where you see what's going to happen to all these kids. As they're wearing these masks, walking yeah. around. So they're wear they're all wearing ticking time bombs. Connell Cochran proceeds to tell Dan Chalice the entire reason why he's doing this. Yeah, the typical bad guy thing to do. Yep, the explanation at the end. Solidifies 
Connell O'Cochran as being one of the best villains. 80s villains. He's so good. He's just so evil. Yeah, he's so <laughs> evil. And the fact that he's been planning this for his almost his entire life to play the ultimate prank. Yeah. He's bought up a whole damn town to do it. And... <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Do I need a reason? <laughs> Kinda. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's great because this is really about Halloween. Yeah, this is the real Halloween. You know, people talk about... Um, Jamie Lee Curtis being great in Halloween 1. Of course, Donald Pleasance being fantastic in all the Halloween movies. But come on, this is one of the best performances in any Halloween movie. Oh, yeah. I'd say it's up there, maybe second place to Donald Pleasance. You know, it's this is an iconic performance. Yeah. Yeah, it really takes you back to the roots of Halloween. Yeah. And also, he's he's taking it from from it being kind of a fun little joke to being serious yeah. business. I'm glad you'll be able to watch it. And he puts on Halloween. <laughs> yeah. For all those people who are pissed off that Michael Myers isn't in this movie, it's that kind of like... Yeah, it's It's like, a bit of a fuck you. Yeah. It's like, it's not supposed to have Michael Myers in it. And we still get the music. That's right. And, yeah, like, Halloween is just a movie in this. Yeah. So this movie is real. Yeah. This is reality. That would be cool for if they did that, if they would have kept going with the, the you know anthology thing where every year it's a different movie. Yeah. If they always put the previous movie <laughs> as a movie. Somehow, yeah. In the movie. Yeah. Would have been neat. This is the last scene that we're going to show for this movie and do commentary on. And it's pretty much the end of the movie. Yeah. So at this point, Dan Chalice has escaped. Cochran's turned into that... Donald Trump guy or whatever <laughs> after getting hit by those beams from yeah. Stonehenge. Yeah, and he's foiled the whole plan and they're, they're in the car, they're driving away and we think that they're going to get to safety. But Cochran had some an ace up his sleeve, basically. The clock is ticking. The clock is ticking. <laughs> Yeah, because even though C Connell Cochran's out of the picture, all these TV stations are still going to air this damn commercial. That's right, yeah. And all the kids still have the masks. Yeah. And big surprise. <laughs> Ellie's a robot. Scratches his face all up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like how this scene, like, it slows down his progress, too, right? Because he's racing against time here. Yeah. And so it's like, no, he doesn't need this right now, yeah. you know? Yeah, this movie does do the the, the race against time really perfect yeah. in, in this ending, in, in the final act. A great sound effect here. Fucking. When he hits her with the, in the head. Ching! <laughs> metal on metal <laughs> oh yeah Dan Chalice is such a good character he's like just the everyday guy who gets stuck in this weird fucking situation <laughs> yeah 
<laughs> I like how this keeps going, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. Like, the poor guy hasn't had enough problems. <laughs> <laughs> oh! He just throws the arm. Yeah. <laughs> it knows exactly where it wants to go, right? I mean, the director had a perfect vision. He executed it perfectly. The screenplay was written by, like, an author. Yeah, and, yeah. And, well, he, and he was pretty pissed off how much they wanted to alter it. He wanted his name completely taken off. Full circle back to the same yeah. gas station. Just yeah. like the old man. Yeah. Your phone! Your phone, where is it? That gas station attendant has got to be like, uh, oh, another the unluckiest crazy. asshole. <laughs> you can see, I love they, they show the clock and it's like literally a minute. <laughs> yeah, a minute. To... See, what an iconic scene. And as you see the kids in the masks yeah. in the background. <laughs> Even the gas attendants hanging out, <laughs> handing out candy. And I like how they kind of listen to him too. Yeah. The third commercial. And I love how, how like he's useless. All, yeah. All he can do is is. Big, yeah. And if no one believes him, it's it. There's it's nothing Scott. you can do. And and his kids are at home watching this. And the 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 dark tone that this movie ends yeah, on yeah. is so Carpenter. Yeah. Obviously, some stations mm. took it off the air, but all it takes is that one. And how much damage <laughs> yeah. was done by that one station that didn't take it off the air? That's right. Yeah. I wish more movies ended like this nowadays. Yeah. You know, where they, like, they went there, they did it. You know, nobody has the balls to do that anymore. They got yeah. ended on some happy note where everything's fine. It's like, I don't want that. I want this. You want bleak and yeah, depressing. Exactly. And like... I want the end of the world. Yeah. And you want to think past the movie about oh like what what happened, you know, not just it's all tied up nicely mm -hmm. in a nice bowl. Yeah. It's like It's like most of Carpenter's movies are like that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like where you're left like what's what the hell what is that character yeah. running into now? Yeah, though? like Halloween, the first Halloween when Myers is gone. Yeah, yeah. Prince of Darkness, just before he touches the mirror. Yeah, yeah. The Thing. Yeah. You're not quite sure. This. Yeah, even though he didn't direct that, even though he didn't direct this, he still had, yeah, had his hands all over right. it. I've always said it's the best John Carpenter movie not directed by John Carpenter. <laughs> yeah. Look at it, you'd think it was. We did for the longest time, we yeah. thought, because he uses those aliases. Yeah. We thought that Tommy Lee Wallace was an alias for John Carpenter. Yeah, until we real oh, that's a real man. <laughs> when he directed it, and yeah. he directed all these other great <laughs> things. So that's our little watch long for Halloween 3, our favorite scenes, the most important scenes we feel to, mm -hmm. to the movie. And, all, and the scenes are like if we were to try to convince someone to watch this movie, what scenes would entice them? What are the most interesting, yeah. captivating scenes? And we think that's them, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a few others peppered yeah. throughout. And it's a fucking concise movie. Hour and 35 minutes. We start off with some mysterious guy running with a mask. And we end up at a factory where they've stolen pieces of Stonehenge to manufacture <laughs> these microchips to put in masks. Yeah. To kill kids. Like, it, it goes from this to grand very quickly, very well in an hour and a half, yeah. you know. And then it shrinks back down, right? Right back down to that same gas station. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then Tom Atkins is just like the old man in the beginning. I don't like it because Michael Myers isn't in it. Well, give it a fucking chance. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, kind of, if the title Halloween kind of puts you off a bit, well, just kind of forget it, you know? Yeah. Don't worry about that. It really has nothing to do with the other movies. It's just another night on Halloween. But it is the most Halloween movie. Of them of, all. Of them all. <laughs> so that's why it earns its title. Yeah. It's got the most sinister evil character. Yeah. And it's got the most sinister motives. It's like... 
and they pr- and he pronounces Sawin correctly. <laughs> you sure, Donald Pleasant? Uh... Sammy. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed our little watch along with the best scenes from Halloween 3. And until next time, keep drinking and happy Halloween.